it, but this might okay. not be a place to think out okay. loud. <laughs> well, maybe, Robbie, you want to send uh, myself an email, Dean the Series 7 Guru at gmail.com or Brian, uh, Brian, and you know, maybe with more information, we can be a little more helpful. Uh, I don't know, Kimberly, if we can go over spreads and straddles for the series seven. Uh, I will link Kimberly. We have many, many videos on uh, spreads and straddles, and I will link to uh, a couple of them again. You can have watch me do it. I, I will tell you, Kimberly, there are eight test questions about spreads. And the eight test questions about spreads, I call it don't hate the eight, is can you identify a spread? Test question number one on series seven is can you identify a spread? Long and short, the same type of contract. Test question number two, can you uh, determine if it's a debit or credit spread? Do you have more money out than in or money, more money in than out? Test question number three, do you want the contracts to exercise or expire? Are you going to be a happy camper if you have a spread and the contracts are exercised or they expire? Test question number four, do you want the contracts to widen or narrow? As you see there, those are linked. Brian's got them there. So I think of Mountain Dew, just do the do or Nike. You know, do it or when you're Dean and you're wide, you need to exercise. I joke Kimberly, but you know, in some cultures, being overweight, being wide is a sign of wealth and prosperity. Unfortunately, not our culture. But, you know, so uh, credit expire narrow. Yeah, credit has six letters, expire has six letters, narrow has six letters. Now, wide to narrow is the hardest concept to get, and you don't need to get it, right? The next thing you got to be able to do is determine max gain max gain and for a credit spread it's going to be the credit and for the debit it's going to be the difference in the strikes less the debit but those two numbers max gain max loss that's our next one is going to add up to the difference in the strikes test question number seven is can you calculate the break even and for break even we have two memory devices cal cal call add to the lower if it's a call spread, doesn't matter if it's debit or credit, we're going to add the net premium to the lower strike. If it's a put, we're going to subtract the net premium from the higher strike. So that's cow or push. Don't hate the eight. The last thing we got to be able to do is determine whether it's bullish or bearish. Do we want the stock to go up or do we want the stock to go down? And there we have a couple of things we can use. Larger premium dominates the position. Or we have a trick called bulls, bulls. And bull stands for because you're long the lower strike. And any uh, spread, if you're long the lower strike, you're a bull. Now, I will link, Kimberly, in the video description to a couple of my favorite lectures on uh, spreads. I think straddles are a little more straightforward. So there are four test questions on straddles. So I call that first version, Kimberly, don't hate the eight. I call this score for more, score for more. The four test questions on a straddle is once again, can you identify it? Now, even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, it is. If you can't identify, you don't know what to do next. You're just going to be staring at it going, I don't know, B. Once you uh, ID it, you got to calculate the break evens. Uh, that's our second test question. It's the only strategy in which we have two break evens. We have an upside break even, and we have a downside break even. I was giving Brian his board space there. To our be, third, not to be. I like it. To be, to be or not to be. Our third test question is: Where is the straddle profitable? And we do indeed have a good memory aid device for this called Silo. Silo. And what silo stands for is short inside, long outside. If it's a short straddle, we want the market price of the stock to be in between those two numbers. And if it's long, we want it outside. Oh, he's giving you a little visual. Love it. Right? Boom. And I call it the matrix, and you call it the aerobics. There we yeah. go. You say tomato, I say tomato. Yeah. And then the last test question, last test question, Kimberly, about a straddle is when do you use it? You buy a straddle when you're expecting volatility, but direction is uncertain. And you sell a straddle 
when you were expecting it to stay within the trading range, within those break even. So there you go. Those, Kimberly, are the advanced option strategies covered on the Series 7. There are nine option strategies you're held accountable for, and these are speculative, right? You have your basics, you have your hedges, and then you got these. So hope that was helpful. I will link to uh, a lecture on spreads and straddles where you can actually kind of try them yourself, right? You can do them. I have long versions, short versions. I have, you know, one of the reasons you want to buy Brian's videos is because he makes editorial decisions. He he distills the potatoes into vodka. And I do not. <laughs> I do not. Well, I mean, I, potatoes in the I, have, I, I have, I don't know why. I think the other day, Brian, I had 130 option videos in the playlist. So. Oh, my goodness gracious.